It's important for entrepreneurs to begin to inspire in order to bless the lives of others, no doubt. Whether the entrepreneur is your friend, a complete stranger, or a mentor. Hi, I'm Jimmy Hendrick, and this episode is called Expect to Inspire on Empower Your Pattern 2.0. Hi, I'm Jimmy Hendrick, member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Success Conference and Thrive Coach. I wish to let you know that there are patterns to help you receive more, help you live a better and extraordinary life right now. I also believe that there are spiritual and temporal tips to help you overcome the adversities in the everyday life. So if you come with me, I will show you these patterns. Get ready. Let's go. Hello everyone in Pattern Realm, I hope, I hope this blesses your life. I was going to talk about edification again, but, and I was going to lump them together with inspiring, but then I thought, well, let's use, Jimmy, let's use a little bit more common sense, right? And I, I found some perfect content. That we're, we're only going to use a part of, okay? And then just just build on it, okay? So here in a bit, a little bit, I'm going to introduce you to some content by um, Kirk Duncan. He is the founder of. He is the founder of. Three key, three key elements. Um, he is a fellow member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I might say he, he's a blessing to so many people's lives. He knows quite a bit about uh, psychology, leadership, um, stuff, stuff dealing with family. So you're going to be in for a treat. While we're waiting on that, I want you guys to get to, to get a get a beverage um after he's done we're gonna hop again in the uh uss uh double nine for the adventure as we talk about inspiration the importance of inspiration right <laughs> because we we <laughs> No doubt we, we need to know this. Um, people need to be inspired. I think some people such as myself, you've been, you've been told by parents or experts, well, because of this, 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 and wrong with you, you'll never be good enough. You'll, you'll never succeed enough. And to have a hunger for success don't necessarily mean don't necessarily mean that that hunger is insatiable. If, if you if you do, you lack one key thing to inspire and to bless, and that that, my friends, is is humility. I think of one of the men. I don't know whether he considered himself a leader. For for me, he was a leader of souls, and I'm talking about my late BFE, Brian Keith Cotton. Okay, that man. We complimented each other in the way that we inspired each other. And the people around us. For instance, with him, you know, he could listen to a person's voice. Either, you know, live with the person in the room or on tape. And tell you what kind of person 
that that person is. And describe him to a T. And he was he was totally blind until he was ever since he was fourteen. If if that tells you something. If that tells you something. Uh, people people tell me that that I inspired them because of all I've been through. In many ways, I think on my LinkedIn profile, I'm, I'm still known as the adversity authority. I haven't done too much work on that. But I do call myself that because, well, it's true. I have overcome a lot of... How do I say it? I have overcome a lot of adversity. The doctor said when I was born, chances was I wasn't going to live long. Um, our doctor said chances are he's mentally challenged, no hope of a normal education. State caseworker and some counselors and psychologists at the Chris Cole Rehabilitation Center said he's so emo, uh, socially, emotionally, and mentally immature. Therefore, he is unfit for college. And let me tell you something: I blasted through all three of those hurdles. And here in a minute, we're, here in a bit, we're going to put on Kirk. Kirk Duncan, and then we're going to come back to me talking about inspiration. So I want you to get ready because, get your beverage, because here he is, Kirk Duncan. You know, as a leader, you know, you have a group of people, or maybe it's even your family, or maybe it's at work, you got this opportunity to be able to literally inspire people to take action. But for some reason, they're not taking action. You know, what's missing? Was it the way that you said it? Was it the way that you explained it? But you're wondering, well, how do I do this so that I can actually inspire all these people to get in on what it is that you're talking about? You know, my mind goes to those parents who try to get their kids motivated to help at the house or that business owner who's trying to get their team to support the company goal. Why is it that some people are able to inspire others and why some don't? Like, what's missing? What are the components that are missing? Well, if you're wondering what it is that you're missing, I bet you it's one of these five different suggestions here I have for you. Over the years of holding events and speaking at seminars and workshops and being able to have the chance to inspire people to take action, I've had a lot of experience doing this, over 5,500 presentations. I've been in front of audiences that didn't take action, and I've been in front of audiences that took massive action. And I figured out what works and what doesn't work. So here's five suggestions for you of what to do to be able to reach in and inspire those individuals. Now the first is to be able to actually explain the opportunity, the problem, or the challenge. Quitting network marketing is one of the best things I've ever done. Yes. You know, sometimes we think inspiring people to take action means telling them what to do. But if people don't know the opportunity, the problem, or the challenge, if they don't know what that is, then they don't see a reason to even get up and get moving to be part of it. Now, being able to describe the problem or the challenge or the opportunity it takes gathering the information, telling the story, and expressing all the components of the story. And even though you might be in a situation where you're t talking about the problem, it doesn't mean that you're a doomsday person by only you know, bringing up the problem that you're sharing. Many people, when they can see that you can explain the opportunity, the problem, or the challenge, when they see that you can explain it in detail, they find interest in listening to you. It's not all about just the steps to take, but they want to know that you, as a leader, actually can see the whole big picture about what it is that they'd be taking action towards. The second part is for you to be able to explain your solution or the idea. 
Now, it seems like that's where you should start, you know, talking about the idea or the solution. But that's not where you start. And that's where a lot of people make their mistake is they start with number two and they don't even address number one. Once you describe the problem and the opportunity, then you pose your ideas. Then you pose what ought to be done. Now the people are going to ask themselves the question, well, why should we take action on this? And this is where you get to be super passionate. This is where literally the purpose, the passion, and the vision really comes out. And for you to be able to answer the question that's in their mind, why? And then you ask, answer the question, why now? It's the question that's going to happen inside of their mind. It's very natural. When you begin to express at the very beginning what you're talking about, they're going to wonder, okay, what is this that we're, going to, we're working on? And what is your big idea? And why should we work on it? And why should we work on it right now? So knowing psychologically what the questions are that are going on inside the, the people's minds, you can answer those in the order that they're coming up inside of their thought process. Children do the exact same thing. But mom, why do I have to clean my room? And why do I have to do it now? So instead of waiting for them to pose the questions that are written here, you already know that's the form of conversation you're going to have. But if you could pre-think this out of why and why now, you can actually beat them to the question in their mind. And that is a true leader. When you're literally answering the questions just as the questions are coming up inside of them. The next step that they're going to want to know is, well, where do we start? Once you give them the why and the why now, and now they're convinced or enrolled into taking action, they got one last step that they're, they're not knowing what it takes, and that's the first step. A mistake I see that leaders make is they lay out the 20-step process. There's like this, all these steps, and over the next... Okay, now, I'm not going to give all the content. Uh, you're going to have to watch, find me and watch it uh, yourself. Because I also have some content. Uh, we're going to hop on the little uh, a little USS Double Nine helicopter. <laughs> I'm also going to be on a USS Double Nine airplane something like that episode. But listen to me, this is how it is. Growing up, the way I did. I had lots of people tell me that I can't. And you know, my grandfather in some ways, in some ways, uh, worked with my mother, I guess, to, to try to handle deals, you know, regarding with the school district and stuff like that for me. And I remember Age, ages 10, 11, 12. I go to his house during the week and weekends during the summer and the school year. I remember one day I was 10 years old. My granddad said, and I quote, You got to say that you can. I won't tolerate that I can't in this, in this household. You're going to say that you can. Because can't could never do anything. And that's all I knew that he said. Because that's what that's what Mama told me. And that's what I remember him saying. But then I remember my uncle, who's the same age as I am. He came to me and said, The full statement that your granddad told me was, Can't could never do anything. Will has to step in and do the job. Okay? It's tough. It's 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 a hard thing. We all the thing is the thing about inspiring people. I want you to think about that. What it means. Some people get offended when we talk about in inspiring people. Well, I don't want to be one of those inspirational people. No, no, I don't want to be one of those in, in, uh, uh, inspirational people. No, 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 no. I'm kind of like, come on. So, 
I'm in the Noah Webster dictionary. Uh, to look up Inspire. And it is <laughs> to inspire one thing he says is that is is to bring breath into a situation. To infuse, you know it brings life into something um In, into your mind, you know, as to inspire with new life. To infuse or suggest ideas or uh, munitions uh, supernaturally to communicate uh, divine instruction in the mind. So see, now, there you go. Um, I kind of get upset when people poke fun of, of speakers like me. They say, you know, well, I want to be one of those inspirational speakers. <laughs> Negative uh, negative Nancy and negative Nimrod. <laughs> um, I could say a few choice things about that, but I won't. Uh, I won't. I mean, it'd be clean, but, you know, I'm not even going to go there. Because my show is not a reactive show. <sighs> but our, dis our distracted, defiant culture wants us to make fun. Of people that have inspired. I remember four years ago, my nephew was in business for with for himself and everything. And there were times that I would hear him just get really upset, and s s s and sometimes explode. Why ain't anyone listening to me? But see, I had observed how he was sometimes when he was working his business. And the fact of the matter is, he says, all they got to do is, is do, do what I say the way I say it. Where I would have been, you know, hey, you know, you know, people, you have your jobs. And I know you can do it. And I know you can do it right. And the ethos of my company is, if we've done something wrong, we make it right as soon as possible. The entrepreneur, the business owner, that thinks he's inspiring people by saying, I'm the leader and that means you have to do what I say, that's... And some people say, well, well Jimmy, aren't you beating a dead horse? In this is a series. Well, sometimes I feel like I have to. Because in, in this in this world, no thanks to this um destructive defiant culture. <coughs> we don't know what leadership is. We don't know what it means to inspire people. You know, when I first founded Empire Your Pattern. And it was about nine months old in June of 2019. I did a show called Leadership Not a One Man Show. And, well, this is kind of what I'm doing now. This is kind of what I'm doing now. And I'm saying it with more confidence. I, I think that the Lord called... For the dying of the former um, Empower Your Pattern show during COVID in order for the rise of this new one. What would you say? 
Now listen to me. I know it's hard. I know it's hard, but listen to me. You, you have... You have greatness inside of you to be an inspirational leader. Okay? I can I consider myself one of those. Do I have my challenges? Yeah. I I have my challenges. Today I was supposed to be at a Zoom call for my ACM business. But um I won't go into the details. I had an interesting night last night with uh, with, with family and my best friend and for some reason my energy levels were just low and 7 o'clock this, you know, and I, I woke up a lot earlier than I thought and around 7 o'clock this morning I was getting tired I thought well I'll just I'll just rest for about an hour or so no no I ended up sleeping for about an hour and a half and when I woke up, I was still tired, so I went to sleep. Woke up. It was past time for the meeting. And I thought, well, there's another Zoom call tomorrow night. I will be there. But the fact of the matter is, it's good to have leaders who can inspire you to be where you need to be. You know? And, and I believe it's good to address the problem first and then present present a solution. Uh, that's what I believe about, and, and this is going to come up. This is going to come up in the middle of March. Uh, one, of, one of the things that entrepreneurs do is they we solve problems. One of my slogans is, I solve problems, that's what I do. But uh, episode e EA54 is going to be um, about impact health sharing, and I, I'm going I'm to be exciting, excited to find out what that is, what's involved there, because you see, we present the problem, and then we present the solution. Not everybody is going to buy into there's a problem. Sadly, but the ones that you'll know that they're hungry to improve, they will. Trust me, they will. Because it's 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 worthwhile. Uh, it's worthwhile, and I do my best to inspire people when I get on the air every day. When I'm pounding the pavement to, uh, for my ACM business, when I'm uh, collaborating with my um, empowerment pa uh, partner, Rob, <laughs> he works circles around me. <laughs> what can I say? But inspiring people means a lot to me. I really discovered how to inspire between 1996 and 1998 when I was in that way international. The problem was um, really that point in my marriage in 1998, I was so sucked into Mike's negativity that I could no longer inspire like I used to. And, and f friends in the business would want me, Jimmy, you're, you're going downhill, man. you got to find some way to get out to come out. And see, see, here's the thing. Our culture in this world, we don't really want to inspire. Our distracted, defiant culture, look at the problems. Multiply the problems. Look at the problems. Multiply the problems. Focus on the problems. Focus on the problems. Pro focus on the problems. Now, I'm sorry, but that kind of makes me gag. <laughs> I wanted to say something else, but, you know, trying to be, you know, civilized here <laughs> makes me gag. And that's one of the reasons why I dropped out of graduate school, because everything so much was focus on the problem. Focus on the problem. 
Focus on the problem. Or focus on dead theories. I am a man that believes in being solution oriented. It's like I told you. My grandfather, from the time I was nine to the time I was 18, just a, just a few months before, he, just a year before he died, he drove to me that you can't say can't. And then he started his front end alignment shot. And one of the things I got from him from the way he worked with his hands and the way that he worked with people. Every problem has a solution. Every problem has a solution. And, and Lord help it. My granddad busted his behind trying to find it. I remember when I was 13 years old and he was just started the shop. I would, um, I would go to the shop and, and work on my homework and, and all this stuff, you know, fifth grade, private school, overwhelming. And mama was helping grab all the books. Granddad was peddling around in the shop. And the thing is, you know, so many, so many entrepreneurs talk about, you know, entrepreneurial thinkers talk about grinding. I kind of like what Dr. Della Toro McNeil says first, you know, flow, don't grind. And, and really a better word for grind, grind for me, hustle. I like hustle. You want to inspire people? Let me tell you something that I think is, is a good idea. You need to be able to say, you know, hey, hey, let, let's, let's work on this problem together. Let's hustle. Let, let's, let's flow together. I don't, I don't want to grind. Grind to me sounds like, you know, <laughs> problem. Hustle? Hustle's all about the solution. During COVID, I was trying, I was working on one of my books called Walk, Walk Like a Man. And I was talking to people saying, you know, hey, just because the world is shot down during the pandemic doesn't mean that you can't hustle. You can. And, and I worked hard trying to get to that point because there was a time. There was a time when I honestly thought after COVID, my life is, is over. All I could focus on was the darkness. But it, it took, it took an ever-loving, merciful God to say, Jimmy, no, it's not. If you focus on the darkness, that's all you're going to, that's all you're going to get is darkness. But if you focus on the light, you're going to get light. You're going to get light. Let me tell you something. Do you want to inspire people? Uh, yes, yes, yes. you got to present the problem. But I think also you need to present the solution. If you're just problem-oriented, then what good are you to inspire people? But if you say, hey, here's, here's the problem, focus on some of the facets of the problem, and then, hey, 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 i got a solution right here, and this is what we can do to work it together. Let me tell you something. Something like that, if somebody does something like that, perfect. I have a political show called the James Hendrick School of Leadership. And to be honest with you, I have been considering suspending some of my news content for the plain reason that all 
All they do is focus on the problem. Oh, look here, we're at the end of the world. Oh, look here, we're at the end of the world. Oh, look here, we're all going to die. Oh, look here, we're all going to die. Or, hey, baby, let's go party. Hey, baby, let's go party. It's the problem. Or avoiding the problem. And you're not going to inspire anybody like that. You're not. And so for the next 14 and a half minutes, I got to say this. You know, focusing on the problem only. It's just going to get people fearful and they're going to bail out from your team. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Deal with some of the ang angles. But it kind of goes along with the cap method uh, that I have for my coaching that I would use for inspiration. Choose. Okay, so you see the problem. You look at the, the different angles of the problem. And then you, you bring out the solution. And then you bring, you bring in a desire to act. You make them act. Okay? You make them act. Develop a plan of action. And, and the most important plan of action, part of the plan of action, like Kirk Duncan said, is the first step. The first step. And that's a lot to think about. That's a lot to sit there and think about. Because, well, quite frankly, quite frankly, you you need that you you need that wisdom to know that you've got that plan of action. But the final part uh, for the last thirteen minutes. We're going to talk more about pursuing happiness. I think inspiring also is about teaching people how they can pursue happiness. I've used this quote because one of the leaders, lead theologians in, in personal development in my faith is a, is a man by the name of uh, Jeffrey R. Holland. And I support and, and, and love what that man says. In fact, uh, my church is having a conference in, in early April. That's worldwide, and he's going to be he's going to be speaking at that conference. But one thing he says is happiness is like a butterfly. If you chase it, it will elude you. If you rest, it'll come rest on your shoulder. All right. What that means is, if you reactively, in accordance to the Earth curse system, chase it, mad dash reactive, mad dash defiant, you won't get there. You won't find happiness. Lots of people make themselves miserable, and lots of people might wear themselves out going that way, okay? I think we can begin to see that. Life has its difficulties, does it not? But that's that's where the blessing comes in. Because let me tell you something, that's where, that's where you're worth it. That's where you're worth it. Because you know. You know when that, that pursuing happiness is important. Some of you probably been miserable for a long time. Maybe you've been craving purpose like myself. Maybe you lost some people. The pandemic has forced some people to move. Torn families apart. Let me tell you something. I empathize, I empathize with you. I've been there. But the beauty of it is I don't think I would have gone nearly as far as I've been. If it hadn't, if it hadn't happened, don't get me wrong. The, the 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 pandemic was one of the biggest disruptors so far in our society, and maybe it's caused many people to re to reinvent ourselves uh, themselves. And you know, we should reinvent ourselves. And many of them moved away. 
which is something and, and gets me. And then, what do you know? Boom. Um, some some aspects of society, including myself, for the longest time with the pandemic and everything. It is it's left people feeling empty and no purpose. And it seems like some people uh, with some form of narcissism or something that's part of the distracted divine culture wants to swoop in and just, just slip you out of there. Take away your dream. Take you away take away your joy. And let me tell you something. There are plenty of those people out there like that. If you want to, if you want to inspire people, you need to inspire the people that want to be inspired. The people that have agreed to follow you. Now, I can't say much about, you know, family. Like, uh, Kirk Duncan says, you know, because, well, I, I've never fathered any children and, and on this side of heaven, I don't see myself fathering any, any, any kids. So, really, what I've got to say about inspiring people is more on the, the macro level in leadership. Like, like a business team or something. And you see, somebody who is, whose way of inspiring people is just do what I say, and then they're angry because they're not listening to you. They're not doing what you say. It's it's all it's all an attitude issue. I'm just being honest with you because I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something now, and I hope I hope this helps you. I hope this blesses you. Okay. So listen to me. I know it's difficult, but go go there and do what you've got to do to pursue that happiness so you can inspire people. I brought this up because, well, inspiration is one of the keys. This This episode, I feel like it's is a watermark here. You you know, in, in episode EA6, I talked about no excuses. It's go time. I was using that, that, using that episode in hopes of inspiring people. Okay? In hopes of inspiring people. And many people who want to inspire people, maybe the culture doesn't get you. Let me tell you something, I hear that. I hear that, I see that pain. I sat there yesterday and and felt that. I know you have. And it's tough. And, and you feel the pain, and you want to leave an impact on, 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 on your life, and the lives of those around you. And the ones that, that, that uh, want to be inspired by you, you take them with you. And, and the ones that don't, love them, okay? Love them and care for them. But if they don't want to be inspired by you and what you're doing, the best thing you can do is let them go. Let them go. I've spoken about so much, so much, um, and I think I think it was about a week ago, if if I remember correctly. Oh yes, now I know what I was talking about the champion mindset. The champion mindset is full of people who inspire people. 
Okay. Rule. Rule number seven. Of. Empower your pattern is. Be inspired. And our distractor defiant culture. It doesn't want us to. To, 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 to live by that. It doesn't want us to even say that. And you want to know why? Our distracted, defiant culture is the kingdom of the devil himself. He don't want us inspired. He don't want us inspiring other people. You might as well just kiss it goodbye because it's not going to happen. Kiss it goodbye because it's not going to happen. <laughs> But you don't have to. The people that are with you, that want to be inspired by you, those those are the ones that count the most. And and the ones, the ones that don't, they're, they're just waffling around. They like for you to succeed, but the, but their talk is failure talk. Okay, their their, their talk is failure talk, and, so, and sometimes you you just gotta tune them out. You just gotta tune them out because they may they may upset you. They may trigger you or something. Let me tell you something. You, you want to inspire people. Let me give you something that's going to help you choose action and pursue happiness. Don't give in to the dream stealers. And, 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 and let me tell you something, folks. There's plenty of them out there. There's plenty of them out there. So, now, listen. The last three minutes here, I want to talk to you about this. This is the demarcation line. The dream stealers. They're, they're part of the problem. I had a counselor years ago when I was going through my divorce. He said, she said this. She said, if a person's not a part of the solution, they're the part of the, part of the problem. And the ones that are part of the problem, just leave them behind. Go. Be with the ones that are part of the solution. And and I know that that's tough. I know that's that's tough. But you know, from from what I have learned from my faith, in and outside of the church house is this. The Lord will show you who's going to be with you and was willing to be inspired by you and who's not. It's going to be painful to let go of old friends who swore they'd be there to get you for you no matter what. But inside they're nothing but dream stealers who lack the requisite faith to, to believe in you and believe in God, what God has for you. In that case, leave them alone. Back off on them. They're not worthy of your friendship. And if if you got a, if you if you got, say a narcissist in your family, that's that's an even harder thing. It burns, don't it? Hurts. Let me tell you something. This is where you say, huh? Ain't gonna ain't gonna you didn't even hear that. And you just jump in and, and go and hang out with the people. That are going to inspire you so that you can inspire people. Right? Open your scriptures. Open your scriptures and be inspired. I, I for, for, I have, for good reason, I came up with that rule, be inspired. Because I got so, so tired of the world, the culture, trying to figure out what inspiration is to them. But sometimes we have to figure out what this fresh is for ourselves. Okay, with that, I hope you enjoy listening to Empower Your Pattern. Please subscribe, be part of Pattern Realm. Until next time, don't just sit there and take it. Build your dreams so you can take it. Do what others don't so you can be what others want. And do what others want so you can step up, step out, and step out, step up, and step in to have what others can. Share this with Mama San, Papa San, and everyone. Choose, act, and pursue happiness. God bless each and every one of you. God bless you. I love you.